Here at Port Houston, we believe you are responsible for your own safety. As a contractor or consultant, it's important that you utilize the proper personal protective equipment, or PPE, for your specific job. It's also important that you inspect your tools and equipment prior to use. Your company is primarily responsible for maintaining its own safety training program. Some of the minimum PPE required at Port Houston are the following. A Class 2 high visibility vest, a hard hat, especially when overhead hazards are present, safety footwear at construction sites or when there's a foot hazard present, personal flotation devices when working over, under, or near the water, Safety glasses with an ANSI Z87 rating are required anytime you're working in a construction zone or when there's an eye hazard present. Each contractor or consultant must identify a safe evacuation route prior to the start of work. Upon notification of an evacuation, follow the predetermined evacuation route. Shelter in place locations are marked by signage throughout the terminal. When dealing with energy isolation or lockout tagout jobs, Safety procedures must be applied as protection from energy sources. Coordinate with Port Houston maintenance personnel before locking out any device. Equipment may contain multiple energy sources. All energy sources that present a danger to personnel must be locked and tagged out to be rendered safe before work occurs. Examples of energy sources are electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, compressed, chemical, fuel, and heat. You may not utilize locks or tags or participate in energy control work unless you've been trained as an authorized person under the control of a hazardous energy program. Your company is primarily responsible for maintaining its own safety training program. Hot work activities are regulated within the terminal by Port Houston Fire and the U.S. Coast Guard. Anytime you are welding, grinding, cutting, or using any type of equipment that could cause a possible spark or fire, you must obtain a valid hot work permit from the port's fire department. While performing any hot work activities on port property, you must always possess a fire extinguisher with a valid inspection label. It is a requirement to have a fire watch that remains on the job for at least 30 minutes after the job is completed. Hot work activities are prohibited from being performed around any flammable or combustible materials. Any hot work being performed without a hot work permit, valid fire extinguisher, or in a prohibited area may result in a fine or penalty from the fire department or from the U.S. Coast Guard. During refueling operations, all engines and motors must be turned off. Open flames and other ignition sources must be kept at least 50 feet away from any flammable or combustible liquids. Smoking is prohibited while performing any fueling operations. Containers being filled with fuel must be placed directly on the ground or attached to a grounding strap. Any flammable liquid or gas must be positively identified before use. If you need to use a fire extinguisher, remember PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. P, pull the pin. A, aim the hose. S, squeeze the handle. And S, sweep at the bottom of the fire. Health and physical hazards must be communicated to employees in accordance with OSHA's hazard communication standard before the product is used. When flammable liquids and gases are being transported, all applicable Department of Transportation rules must be followed. Only those individuals who have been properly trained, received authorization, and coordinated entry in accordance with Fort Houston's confined space program may conduct confined space entry. OSHA defines confined space as a space that, while not necessarily designed for people, is large enough for an employee to enter fully and perform certain work. Confined spaces are not designed for continuous occupancy by the employee and has limited or restricted means of entry or exit. These spaces may include underground vaults, tanks, storage bins, pits, diked areas, vessels, silos, and other similar areas. A permit required confined space is a space that meets the above definitions and contains or has the potential to contain a hazardous atmosphere, contains a material that has the potential to engulf an entrant, has walls that converge inward or floors that slope downward and taper into a smaller area that could trap or asphyxiate an entrant, or contains any other recognized safety or health hazard. Please coordinate with Port Houston Fire Department and maintenance before entering any confined space regardless of whether or not the confined space is permit required. During trenching and excavation activities, all contractors and consultants must comply with OSHA 29 CFR 1926, subpart P, 
A competent person must be assigned to a work site who is capable of identifying existing hazards in the work area and who has the authorization to ensure corrective measures are performed to eliminate all hazards. Means of egress from trenching and excavation areas must be established. All underground lines must be identified prior to excavation. Overhead power lines must be identified and posted clearly and visibly. Seatbelts must be worn at all times while operating any equipment or vehicle on Port Houston property. All job site personnel are responsible for executing stop work authority, including subcontractors when situations warrant. Work safe, live safe, be safe.